Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. As we begin our study, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him, as usual, to bless our time together. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word. We're learning so much about how to relate to other people. We know You've done so many great things for us. And now, Lord, we're able to respond to those things by You giving us direction for our lives. Whether we be husbands or wives, or whether we be uh, those that are still children to their parents, or whether we be servants to those or employees to those that are our bosses or masters, or whatever it is, you want us to relate in such a way that it brings honor and glory to you. So that's what we want to do today. By studying your word, we ask you to guide us into all truth by your Holy Spirit and empower us to live according to that truth. And we're going to be careful to give you the thanks for helping us with this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The title to today's lesson is No Eye Service or Men Pleasers. It's taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 6. After leaving the instructions to the wives, husbands, children, and fathers within the Ephesian church, Paul the Apostle turned his attention toward servants. Servants were to be obedient to their masters with reverence as to the Lord. And in chapter 6 and verse 6 of his letter to the Ephesians, Paul directed servants not to do this with eye service or as men pleasers, where we read, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. The verse begins not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ. Paul began with the words, not with eye service, which means service that is performed only under the master's eyes, which in his absence renders sluggish obedience. As men pleasers, which refers to those who study to please men or court the favor of men. But, which is the disassociation conjunction, that means what is about to be written takes precedence over what was previously stated. Moreover, nevertheless and nonetheless, as the servants which means slaves, bond slaves, men of servile condition. They were to give themselves up to another's will and are devoted to another to the disregard of their own interest of Christ, who is the anointed one, the Messiah, and the Son of God. Servants were not to work and be obedient only when their masters were in their presence, nor were they only to work as to study in court man's favor. The verse goes on to say, doing the will of God from the heart. Paul continued doing the will or producing, constructing, forming, and fashioning the commands, precepts, wishes, purposes, choices, inclinations, desires, and pleasures of God, who is the Godhead bodily or Trinity, which is comprised of God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From the heart, which refers to the seed of feelings, desires, affections, and aversions as servants, obeyed and served their masters. They were to do so with all their heart as though they were pleasing and fulfilling the desires of Jesus himself. When we think through these words of Paul, we see the motivation and drive that should be in all servants or employees. They are to serve their masters or bosses with all their affection and feelings because their true work is as unto the Lord. Though the bosses may be the benefactors of their work, the Lord is their true boss or master. With the help of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit, may all employees or servants realize who their real boss or master is and let them serve the Lord with pleasure and fulfill all he desires of them. Next time, Paul gives another instruction to servants so read ahead and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.